Today I'm excited to have you try doing this standard IDW, making this drawing that you see in front of you. And we're going to have you try creating a section view over here, something new that we're adding to us. And remember we talked about section views because we are going to dimension how deep this pocket goes here. And it's never a good practice to dimension. We could have done it up here on a hidden line, but it's not good practice to dimension hidden lines. So that's why we're creating this section view. And here we're going to dimension to an object line to show the depth of these two pockets. Okay, so let's get started. Today we're going to start off on our home view and we're going to come up to our ribbon bar in the top. We're going to select a new standard IDW, this icon right here, and click Create. Once again, we need to change our sheet size. It starts off the default as a D size sheet, so we're going to come to our model browser bar on the left hand side, and we're going to go to Sheet 1, right click, Edit Sheet. And here we're going to change our sheet size to size B, and click OK. Okay, looking good so far. Next, let's go get our two jam part. We're going to come up to our ribbon bar. We're going to click our base view and select that. And then we need to go to our browse folder right here. Okay, the magnifying glass in the folder to open our file. We should automatically go to our H drive, this gray box, green line underneath of it. First initial, last name, 000. If that doesn't automatically come up for you, just click on the pull down menu and all the way down to the bottom is where you're going to go. Okay, and in your H drive, you're going to find your Jam 2 part, and click Open. Once we have that selected and identified, we're going to click OK. Take your cursor, get the red dotty line that goes around the perimeter of your object. We're going to click and stretch this over to the left. Okay, now let's talk about creating that detail first. So up in the top here we have a couple different views. We've used base and projected view before. Now we're going to come across and we're going to choose section view. And this shows the internal detail of a part. So we're going to click on section view. and We're going to come over here. I'm going to zoom in on that a little bit for you. We're going to come in here and I want to have my mouse kind of in a vertical line that I'm going to end up cutting through this direction right here. Okay, So I'm going to click and I'm going to start making my line come down. This is where I'm cutting through and that looks like a pretty good place to cut. If I'm not happy with that I can always press escape key, click section again. Once I get that plus mark I'm going to click and I can draw that down. Try and stay on a vertical if you want. Okay, so let's here we go. Get your little icon changed to a plus by clicking, and then I'm going to stretch that coming down. Once you're happy with where you're at, we're going to click to place that line, and then I'm going to right click. Those of you on an iPad, you might have to go up to the top, use that little window shade pull down and select your mouse to get your right click. And then I'm going to select continue. Okay. Automatically it takes and it positions my section view line. So you can see my cutting plane line. Let me move that off to the side. You can see my cutting plane line here. And I'm going to take my detail and I'm going to move it off here to the side. Click to place it. Nothing to it. That's how we make a section view. Okay, let's go back out. Now let's take care of the other view. We need a top view up here and we need a pictorial isometric. And in order to do that, we're going to click our projected. Okay, now when I selected my projected view, it doesn't automatically have that icon or that image attached to it. So I need to come down to my front view, click my front view, and now I have that attached here. So I'm going to position my top view, click to place it, and I want my pictorial isometric view, click to place that as well. When I'm finished, I'm going to right click and select create. Okay, now according to the dimensions that are on here, 
These are dimensions you guys are going to be putting on. I'm going to place those on as well. These notes and the techniques learned, you don't have to add those on. Let's go back to our drawing. So now on our drawing, I'm going to go up to the top above my ribbon bar and I'm going to select Annotate. Coming in on my top view, I need Dimension Tool. And I'm going to dimension the right side of this top view. That shows me my extrusion depth. And this is where our detailed version, our section view version, comes in, where I can actually dimension to get the depth of that pocket. Okay? Now I think all the other dimensions we have on our front view. So let's start placing some of those on. Dimension tool. I'm going to dimension from the hole to the side. Hold to the top. Okay, and all I'm going to do is keep placing these on according to the same location that they are on our part. This shows us our offset. What else do we have in there? Okay, nothing too bad. I need the vertical one for our hole. Okay, now let's take a look at our hole and thread tool. Okay, for dimensioning, since we have holes and threads, we're going to take and place this on here. Bring that down. That looks like a good spot. And let's see what else we're missing. We could do this angle dimension in here. So let's do our go back to our dimension tool. Click on your angle line. Click on your horizontal line. Okay, now you see how it puts the 45 degree on our block. So that's just the order that we select it in. So let's do our bottom line first and then our angle line. And see how that takes our 45 degrees and puts it on the outside now. Okay, that's a much better spot. To get our fillet definition in there, we're going to click on leader text. And we're just going to come in here and grab one of our areas. Press enter on the keyboard when you're done. And then we can type in all fillets, 0.25. We can move that off to the side. Click on your text. Click on your text and you can move that out to the side. Okay, see I'm grabbing that little green dot that's right there. Okay, another way that you could do this one, I'm going to delete that. Another way that you can do that, if you grab your dimension tool, you come onto that circle, come onto the circle, okay, not getting the green dot, and it automatically places it on there for you. Then you can take and you can grab your text and move it off to the side and click, click on your text. Put your cursor in front of the stuff that's in default, and then you can type all fillets. And click OK. Both ways are acceptable and are fine. Okay, now we have that part done. Let's get it prepared in order to turn in. First thing we're going to do though is save it. We're going to go up to the orange file in the top left hand corner, click on save file, and go down to save as. Once again, this is going into your H drive. First initial last name 000, gray box with the green line underneath of it. File name is the same as 2JAM is great. Click Save. Okay, now we're going to make it a PDF. So we're going to go up to the top orange file in the top left hand corner. Go down to Export. We're going to Export PDF. Make sure this is going into your H drive. And click Save. Great job. Created that offset part. We used vertical and horizontal constraints in order to constrain these four holes in the corners. We did our offsetting lines. We did an angular line tangent to a circle and at a specific degrees. And on our drawing we created our first section view. Pretty awesome. Please don't forget to turn in this 
PDF version to Google Classroom. Have a great rest of your day.